This week on CrossFeed. Is Obama a Muslim or not? Embryonic stem cell research revisited. Crosses ruled unconstitutional or not. What about Christian concepts? Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I am Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. I'm Jim Butler out here in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts, pastor of St. Luke's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Dedham. So it's been a while since we've had an episode, but uh, <clears throat> even though you haven't seen us, Jim and I saw each other, which was pretty cool. Yes. First time we met in 10 years. Yeah. Together again for the first time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so, we're really excited about that. I posted some pictures up on the Facebook page. Um, and uh, we did have a comment. Of, somebody said something to the effect of, uh, can't believe that in all this. Or no, it was, uh, um, oh, I had a bet going that it wouldn't happen before Jesus came back. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we we uh, brought my son home from the army. We stopped off and spent the night at Dale's house and uh, took him out for a very good beer down at uh, uh, Rush to Place that uh, was one of the most fun places I've ever been to. They, it was ladies' night. There are no women in the place at all. <laughs> <laughs> and they were doing karaoke night and there was nobody singing. <laughs> Which is probably for the best, but it was kind of loud. <laughs> oh, it was very loud, but it was fun, and it was good beer and good food. Josh and I really enjoyed eating eating there that night. The food was really good, so um, it was good. It was good, to, good, good being out there and stuff. And uh, and that was just before Labor Day weekend. Of course, last week was Labor Day. So, uh, well, where should we start tonight? Let's get this thing going. Um, well. <clears throat> oh, let's deal with Obama as a Muslim. Well, that's That's been a real, that's one of those topics in the news that I don't know why, and I don't know why I'm supposed to care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there was, there was recently a Pew Research uh, poll that they said that, uh, that only a third of, um, of Americans correctly identify Obama as Christian. And most people think he's Muslim. Well, not in most people, but a, a, significant, a significant minority. Yeah. I think it was like 18%. So. You know. You know, this is so goofy considering the fact that, you know, his his big um, sort of damaging thing during the campaign was his Christian pastor that was giving him a bad name. Right. And, and and why did he not um you know sort of stand up to this guy and 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 shut him up to begin with because he'd been his pastor for so long 20 years yeah so yeah he is part of the UCC unitarians considering christ <laughs> so you know so here he's he's been a member of this church and and was apparently involved enough that he was felt pretty close to the to his pastor enough that you know he didn't want to badmouth him and stuff. And yet, oh no, he's a closet Muslim. <laughs> All right, now, if someone really was a Muslim, would they have a chance of being elected president of the United States? No, sadly, not a chance. All not right. yet, anyway. No. Uh, although I, you know, one person did point out. Okay. No, no. Uh, that um, <clears throat> technically, if you look at Islamic law, he would be considered that. Because, you know, he says his father, you know, well, his, his father, uh, who I didn't really know, but was kind of supposed to be kind of an agnostic, but he wasn't a how, but his, you know, his father converted to, to Islam, and so uh, that would be his grandfather converted to Islam, therefore his father would be considered a Muslim, and he, you know, by their law would be considered a Muslim. Uh, of course, you know, if you have a Jewish mother, you're considered Jewish, too. So, uh, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. 
Um, so, I, I, but I, I, you know, I'm not sure why this brought up an issue, except you know, I wonder. If, well, I wonder if it had anything to do with the fact that he's been in um, uh, uh, Washington D.C. for two years, and we never hear about him going to church anywhere. Well, actually, we've heard a lot about the fact that he doesn't go to church. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, unlike Bill Clinton, who was very, you know, famously going, you know, quite regularly. Um, of course, he gets messing around with. <laughs> well, we won't go about there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As far as as far as who lives a more, you know, sort of Christian life, moral life yeah. there. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Obama's real dedicated to his family and, and stuff like that. And, you know, as president, he doesn't spend nearly enough time with them. But that's, yeah, you know, it's, it's it's pretty tough to juggle that when you're president. So, I, you know. I, I Well, the other thing was he, he at the time, you know, uh, he and the Democratic Party at the last election were, were really working on a outreach to evangelical Christians. Mm-hmm. And that seems to kind of disappear, too. I think we covered that story. Matter of fact, that they, you know, that that outreach just kind of disappeared. It's like, you know, we don't care, we don't need you, we don't do anything, and you know. So I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I see. I I think it was. Well, that didn't work. Because <laughs> I mean, seriously, it didn't. Not a chance. Because you know, let's face it. Most evangelicals listen to Glenn Beck. <laughs> Yeah, because who knows theology better than a Mormon? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you know, I mean, and 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 Rush Limbaugh, you know, if you ever hear him talk about the Bible, <laughs> he he sort of he he sort of takes a Thomas Jefferson approach, <laughs> not quite, but uh, you know, he kind of picks and chooses what he likes and doesn't like, and he has no qualms about saying like, oh, Revelation, couples, other, you know, ah. Eh. I, I don't think that's real. I think that was just, you know, something that somebody stuck in there. And <laughs> so, so if there's something he doesn't like, if there's something he does like, though, that, you know, that sort of works for him, then he'll definitely grab hold of that. Oh, right there, you know. <laughs> but, okay, uh, you see, whereas I, um, I'm glad you listen to that stuff. I don't, you know. Well, I... My dad was a big fan. So when I was visiting my dad, um, a lot of times he had it on. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know that I've ever actually like turned it on and listened to it, mm-hmm. but, um, but there was no way I was going to tell my dad to turn it off because he would probably kick me out before he'd turn off Rush. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's not my fault. My dad makes me do it. I understand <laughs> the way that works. Yes, we, we, we believe you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let's stick with the politics. Let's, let's jump over here to Virginia and... Um, <clears throat> is it okay to um, have a holiday display or not? And um, it says that a, the Republican Attorney General uh, set out a new opinion that says um, uh, local governments do not have to ban holiday displays that include religious symbols. Yeah. <clears throat> and... Um... So it's my, um, this is in Virginia. Uh, it's my opinion that a local government entity is never categorically compelled to prohibit holiday displays, including those incorporating recognizably religious symbols, because governments enjoy considerable discretion in accommodating the religious expression of their citizens and employees and their own recognition of traditional seasonal holidays. It is further my opinion that displays depicting the birth of Jesus Christ are permissible, provided the government ensures appropriate content and context. All right. And uh, Kent Willis, the executive director of the Virginia branch of the ACLU, described this opinion as accurate. He said localities can ban all displays, including those that are religious or allow all displays. You know, and so that's the whole thing is you either, you got to, set your policy and then you got to leave it kind of wide open if you say it's you know it's pretty much got to be all or nothing right now what's interesting is trying to understand is if this coming um um is the is the is the county or the is the local government putting those up because it says, you know, prohibiting 
how it displays some public property. Um, and it says it's never categorically compelled to prohibit those displays. But it's not saying who's putting them up. So sort of who's going out and paying for the crash. Right. You know, because uh, this is... Um, I'm a big fan of money. You know, uh, uh, um, you know, it came from uh, Loudoun County when they banned structures, religious or otherwise, last year from the land of the century-old courthouse in Leesburg. Um, so See, the, I don't know. I, <clears throat> you know, I bet a lot of these places, because it's been tradition, the the county or whatever probably did buy it at some point. So mm-hmm. you can complain about that, but it was probably 50 years ago, you know. Or longer. Yeah, so, you know, there's sort of statute of limitations on that stuff, and, and you can't really complain about something that was done all that time ago. Oh, yes, they can. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah, a lot of things have been done a long time, and then all of a sudden somebody complains, and now it's time to stop. So, oh, yeah. yeah but, uh, but they can't complain about the money being spent. I mean, they they can say they shouldn't have. But it's not like they can say, you need to take it back to the store and get our money back. Because you know? <laughs> the five and dime isn't there anymore. Right. I'm not sure what is meant by the appropriate content in context. Um, yeah, you know, somebody once said, I think it was George Will who said, yes, if you have a crush up there with Jesus, you, you know, got to be protected by a couple of reindeer and a Santa Claus over the top of it. <laughs> you know, um, you know, and I, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm a person that, you know, I think that's exactly the right rule, though, is, you know, uh, put something up there, you know, that, yeah, I, I mean, just, you know, let it could be taken on holiday, you know, except, you know, display of whatever religious season it is, um, kind of like in the Old Testament, um. You know, Cyrus the Persian, you know, put out his, his decree that all the, um, um, uh, you know, that, that the people were to be freed and, uh, we're going to build temples. And he, you know, he paid to have temples built by all these exiles being returned. And, you know, whoever it is, you know, whatever God you believe in, have that per, you know, pray to that God on behalf of the government. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's a, just a kind of a benign, you know, we don't really care what you do, but, you know, just remember the government and we're going to kind of support everybody in doing whatever it is they do. Right. Yeah. So it's just it's to, you know, <clears throat> to you, you look at the the Constitution where it says that the Congress shall make no law that um, that prevents the free exercise of religion. Right. And um or well it's a little more than that but for our purposes and so they um here they're they're basically they're not preventing it um they're kind of promoting it but not promoting any one religion and you know so if the the flying spaghetti monster people want to have a flying spaghetti monster day um fine you know we'll have a um you can, you know, promote your put up a, a placard on the billboard on the uh, bulletin board uh, advertising your spaghetti dinner, and uh, you know if you want to. No. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I guess you have a plate out there with, with meatballs in it, sitting on the town square, you know, and yeah. you know, and hopefully nobody, you know, no baker comes by and eats it. But uh, you know, so you know, uh, but I think you know, there's a all what I would call a benign neglect of, you know, on the government's part of religion. And, yeah, we're going to just acknowledge that this this is, we're not supporting anyone particularly. We're just acknowledging that these are the religions that are, wor- you know, worshipped, that worship in our area. Yeah, it's sort of but a reflecting the values is, of the community. Yeah, you know, whatever they happen to be. And, uh, you know, and we're, we're just kind of giving a recognition to them. Mm-hmm. I mean, up here, I, one of the the county courthouses, um, you know, um, you know, that, you know, they have a, um, a crash and they have a menorah, you know, and, you know, they like the, the, you know, they have the menorah lights one each week during Hanukkah. 
I don't think anybody ever, ever you know, thought two words about it. Um, uh, that here in Randolph, uh, they just recently, they started school last week, and this week they already had a couple of days out of school for Rosh Hashanah. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, you know, such everybody gets Jewish Christmas population. off. You know, and um, so it makes sense. Okay, well, let's contrast this then with our friends over there in Utah and the state trooper and, and trooper crosses. Why don't you share this story then? Okay, so this is a, a federal appeals court um, in Utah that uh, said the large crosses along the roads in memories of Utah state troopers killed in the line of duty are unconstitutional. Uh, 10th Circuit Court of Appeals that said that crosses erected on public land along Utah highways violate the Constitution. 12-foot high, 6-foot wide crosses were paid for with private funds to mark the spot where state troopers died in the line of duty. <clears throat> and um, said it's, it's a reminder. The uh, Lieutenant uh, Lee Perry of the Utah Highway Patrol said that it's a reminder for us to stay safe so we can get home to our families at night. And it's a way to honor our friends and comrades. All right. Um, so those are huge. <laughs> They're huge. <laughs> this isn't just the little, you know, little sort of this person was killed in a drunk driving accident stuff that, that you see along the road some places. I mean, these are 12 by 6. 12 by 6. Big. That's big size. Okay. But size, uh, uh, okay. Is the size important? I mean, you're driving down the road. And you see all these crosses in different places. What does that convey to your mind? A cross along the side of the road. Somebody was killed here. Five million people died. Okay, that that really that's what it would convey yeah. to your mind. Yeah, seriously, because like in Wisconsin, yeah. in in Iowa, there's there's little. I mean, they're they're little crosses. You know, they're like maybe a foot or two tall. Um, and usually there's like flowers around them or something like that. But um, but yeah, you see that somebody was killed in an auto accident, probably a drunk driving accident. Okay, I gotta understand. Maybe it is a size then, because I mean, if I'm driving down the road and I, I guess I see this big twelve foot, twelve by six cross, I, I you know, I'm going to think it was put up there by a church. Right. Well, you know, yeah. I'm going. One that size. You know, yeah, I, okay, I see what you mean by, you know, a bunch of little, you know, if it's a small cross with a bunch of flowers around it, yeah, I would think that was probably a, a site of an accident. But uh, this apparently, it says, you know, it doesn't say anything about, you know, flowers around these or other little memorials or anything. It's just this big old cross, you know, there. Um, and uh, I would think just, just that by itself, I mean, if, you, if I was driving along, they were just, you know, something you would see, you know, you could notice as you're driving, you know, down a highway, uh, that I would think that was probably put there by a church for some reason. Mm-hmm. I mean, was we were driving back, uh, where, where was that? I'm an excellent driver. Somewhere. I can't remember exactly where it was. Um, I don't know if it was Kansas or New York. I can't remember. There was this big, huge cross. I mean, you could see it several miles away. Um, and, you know, and it had to, you know, and all these people had pulled over and taking pictures of it. And, it, you know, it's just like the cross by the road, you know, and, mm-hmm. you know, some other, you know, big sign there, Jesus is Lord and, you know, and things. But, yeah, you know, obviously, but even from a distance, it, it you know, it was, it was obviously going to be, it's supposed to be a religious symbol. Mm-hmm. You know, here I got to ask the question, you know, what's your mind, what would your mind go to? And. Seeing just this big cross up there would not go to, oh, that's where a state trooper died. <laughs> right, right, right. So, you know, and, and for that matter, what if the state trooper was Jewish? I don't know how many Jews there are in Utah. It's mostly Mormon or Catholic, but a handful of Lutherans. But <clears throat> Well, on the other side of this is now, you know, the Alliance to, uh, uh, Defense Fund, a coalition of religious attorneys, so they're, they're fighting against this. Uh, you know, that that's this decision. You know, <sighs> granted now the state's not doing it, it's, it's a private funds and all that kind of good stuff, but, you know, I think about this. At, at what point do we empty the cross of its meaning? Right. You know, by saying, you know, instead of, 
oh, there's nothing religious about this. This is just a reminder of state troopers who died. Well, aren't we kind of empty the cross of what it's all about? Mm-hmm. That, you know, the cross is important because it's a symbol of Jesus' death and his resurrection. You know, it's not like we're almost like you wanted to say, oh, yeah, it's a religious symbol, but it's really not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd be the first to contend that, no, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, sorry, I, I know that, you know, if you're trying to push for this, that that you're, um, you you want to kind of go, well, not really, you know. This reminds me of the story about a, um, a, um, uh, there was a church next next door to a strip club and the and the church was praying that God would destroy this strip club. And so then one day it gets struck by lightning. And so the um the strip club takes the church to court for um for destroying it. And oh it's 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 their fault that they um you know, they were praying that God would destroy it and then he did. And uh and and so in the church people are going well, we didn't do anything, you know? And so the judge says, all right, so I've got a, a strip club owner here that believes in the power of prayer and a church full of people that don't. <laughs> all right. You know, it's that sort well, of we thing. prayed God would do something about it. We didn't, you know, but we didn't set fire to it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know what else you can, you know, argue, you know, can you prove that, you know, well, my, our prayers caused it to be destroyed? That's another question. But, you know, here it is, an, an, you know, I think... Yeah, yeah. Sometimes there's just this thing of, yeah, we want you know we want to have a religious symbol, but we really don't want to admit that it really is a religious symbol. Yeah, and yeah. So then, yeah, what are you doing to the symbol? Yeah, you know, for the sake of your monument, you're you're willing to say that that the cross is is a purely secular symbol. Right. I, yeah, I, I'm sorry, but I you know, here, okay. Here's what they should do instead. Put up a like, you know, sort of "don't drink and drive" signs or "drive safely" or or something like that, and then underneath it, in memory of, you know, state trooper or whatever, you know, sergeant, you know, something. All right, and then you know, and and then sort of advertise it with a big campaign and and stuff like that, and 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 let people know, you know, here's here's what these actually mean. All right, and and so we're going to take down the crosses and and leave the cross as a Christian symbol, or and you know, interestingly enough, for the state of Utah, it's probably not a, a religious symbol because Mormons don't use crosses. Yeah, but you know, you could, um, you know, you could put up a, a picture of a badge. Mm-hmm. You know that people would relate to a oh a, a state trooper. Um. You know, you you can put up other things, I think, and uh, that that would convey convey the same thing. It's interesting because generally, you know, I'm a, you know I'm kind of on the other side of this this type of stuff, but on this one, I I just I, I just try to ask, you know, uh, um, what would most people think? And if I saw these big crosses, I would really think a church put those there, mm-hmm. and you know that they are, you know, and they're, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't think this is where a state trooper died. Well, you know, I mean, as opposed to a a you know a crush on a courthouse, where I don't think that court that, that the county is necessarily Christian. I think they're just acknowledging a holiday that a lot of people celebrate. Mm-hmm. Right. So you know, I think about um, you know use the example of these little crosses that you see along the side of the road where there was an accident. Okay. So I see that, and I don't assume that that was put there by the government. This is the family's way of of sort of it's it's a memorial all right and um and this is put there by the family it's you know if there's flowers or whatever by it that there's family members that are there that are keeping that up and and maintaining it and stuff like that and you know and and we've talked about that kind of thing before but and and I don't really have a problem with it um i it it's kind of the same thing that i'm seeing a cross and i'm thinking accident and when I, and when i see that i, I don't really think about Oh, right there on you know the side of the highway, Jesus died for me. You know that that's not what comes to mind. Um, at the same time, it's it's that could be the family's way of saying, um, you know, this is our our loved one died here, and um, but we have hope in Christ. 
Right. You know. it, it can, yeah, very easily can be that, but, uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting, interesting aspect of, of life there. Well, we might as well deal continually here with, um, church and state issues. <laughs> Seems to be our big issue tonight. <laughs> and this is kind of interesting. Um, so they are down in Virginia. This is the second time I've been down in Virginia tonight. Um, and there was a Christian band concert at a Virginia military base. And the bunch of soldiers who said, no, we don't have any desire to go, were, uh, uh, um, you know, confined to the barracks and told to clean it up. Yeah. Um, nice. So, um, yeah, the band, this is uh, in Richmond uh, at... Uh, or uh, more specifically, uh, I lost the name. It was a weird name for a city. Newport News. There you go, Newport News. Um, and uh, they, it was a Barlow Girl concert uh, for those who are familiar with them. And uh, and so this was, uh, they played as part of Commanding General's Spiritual Fitness Concerts. And uh, so there were. Uh, staff sergeant told 200 men in their barracks they could either attend or remain in their barracks. 80 to 100 declined not to attend. So instead of being released to our personal time, we were locked down and told um, not to use their cell phones or computers, but clean up the barracks instead. And uh, so the uh, Military Religious Freedom Foundation, uh, whose president is our friend Mikey Weinstein, uh, said that Christian themed events are ubiquitous throughout the military. And, uh, and I, I love this quote. Whenever we see this egregious, unconstitutional religious tyranny, our job is to fight it. <laughs> okay. I have to agree with Mikey Weinstein, but probably not as extreme as he's making it out to be. <laughs> well, I, I think he's absolutely correct. If, uh, 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 if it was a bunch of people and they were told to attend a uh, Muslim service, you know, and they said, no, we're not going to do that. And they were, you know, OK, then you can't call anybody. You can't computer have computer time. You're confined to your barracks and I'll clean it up. Oh, gosh, we'd be all over it. Mm -hmm. um, and we would say that's a that's a that's an unjust, a, you know, uh, uh, um, a. Um, you know, uh, uh, um, religious persecution, abuse of authority, abuse of authority, mm -hmm. that's the term, you know, abuse of authority. Um, you know, maybe we wouldn't say tyranny, uh, that may be going a little bit too far, but definitely, I mean, no, this is not, no, this is absolutely wrong. I, I mean, gosh, yes, there are a lot of Christian people in the army and yes, they do encourage, uh, uh, you to go to, you know, be involved in some sort of religion. I mean, your, your faith, you know, I mean, uh, even a basic training Sunday morning, um, it's time to relax. Uh, and you know, it's time to go to worship and, you know, you can't get bothered by your drill sergeant in, in, uh, uh, chapel. I mean, that's just one of the rules. As my, one of my kids told me, you know, for it's an hour that he treat you like, treat like a human being again. Um, <laughs> So it's real popular to go to because, you know, the drill sergeant can't bother you, can't say anything to you there, and you get treated like a human being. If you don't believe in anything, it's still kind of nice just to get away at this private place. But um, to say go or, you know, you're confined to the barracks and clean it up, that's, that's no, that's absolutely wrong. Mm -hmm. Yep. So... It's not often although it's me, side I, with Mikey although in the, in the military, anything that has the commanding general in, in the very front of it, uh, you, you tend not to mess around with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this is about uh, 20 of the men, including several Muslims, refused to attend the concert based on their religious beliefs. So, um, apparently other ones just went, eh, no thanks, not my thing. Not a big Barlow Girl fan, you know. Right. I don't know. I've never heard of it. Um, I have one uh, of their songs. Uh, yeah, he said it was a uh, went the concert edict. Went, was a uh, Captain 
who simply said that he wanted to show support for those kind of events that bring soldiers together. Um, you know, I, I'd like to read his actual quarter. What did he actually say? Yeah. You know, yeah, because we're um, just getting did, a little did, clip here from the Associated Press. Yeah. Well, did the, did the, uh, did the, did the, did the sergeant read the order right? You know, it's, you know, it goes to the enlisted men for him. Um, did he, you know, it was what, what he understood it to say and what he did actually what the order said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we're in trouble. But the officer apologized to the soldiers um, and said it was not his intent to proselytize. So, um, you know, hopefully, you know, he they will, you know, give them some other free time or something to make up for that, you know, mm-hmm. because you know, they should not have been punished in that way. Um, and, you know, I mean, yeah, 20 of them said it was due to the religious beliefs, they were either Jewish or Muslim or whatever and didn't want to go. But, you know, it said about, you know, 80 to, to 100 didn't attend. So almost half the men in that barracks did not attend. Yeah. So, yeah, no, you can't, I mean, you know, you can't force people to go to, and, and yeah, there's, it's evangelism. I mean, it is. Because they're going to talk about Jesus at the concert and, you know. And, and stuff, and, and so absolutely it is. And right. no, I'm, I, I don't think that there's anything wrong with making something like that available. Um, you know, I was watching a clip on YouTube of um, it was it was uh, Gene Simmons from Kiss uh, was uh, was doing a concert for, and there was military from all four branches. And, um, I, I guess you can't say all four, but Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, not Coast Guard. Um, but, uh, he was, it was pretty amazing because, you know, he was, he was doing some other stuff. And then he, he, he like did the, the song from each group and then he did God Bless America. Mm-hmm. And it was just weird hearing Gene Simmons singing God Bless America. <laughs> Irving Berlin, okay, hmm. <laughs> and then by your kiss, cool. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. people. I mean, we have to understand. You know, these um, uh, uh, an army base is really a small city. I mean, yeah, you, know, you have the guy, you have the barracks for the guys there. You also have sections that fam- whole families live in. So yeah, they've got all kinds of things, all kinds of activities on the base all the time. I mean that that's just that's just reality, and Christian concert can be part of that. There's there's certainly nothing wrong with it, but to you know uh, um, say you have to go, um, that's where the problem needs to be. You know, mm-hmm. trying to to enforce something that shouldn't be enforced on people. Yep. You know. Uh, uh, All right. So okay. Well, the last story here um, actually has changed a little bit. I think hasn't it? Maybe you know. The world is changed. I'm... Oh, boy. Yeah, this is an old story, and I'm not sure, actually. So I, I think I this is first by a higher court just, just this week. But anyway, it um, uh, 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 deals again with... Uh, um, on August 23rd, uh, a Washington judge halted uh, the fund stem cells... Um, Saying, um, you know, it, uh, 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 um, um, that, uh, it, uh, violated, um, the law. He, he did not rule on the morality. He simply said, given the, um, the way the law read by, of Congress that to, um, uh, uh, go forward with stem cell funding would, um, uh, uh, be a violation of, I think it was the Wicker Amendment, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. I did not know that. So I think that it's still going on. Oh, that's not right. No. NIH resumed stem cell funding two days ago. Right. <clears throat> yep. Um... Temporarily. It's, you know, I, I don't know which direction this is going to go. Um, so an injunction was placed. The, the injunction was placed on a stay pending, though, the final appeal. Mm-hmm. Um, so, all right. 
we've talked about embryonic stem cell research before. Important distinction to make that we're talking about embryonic stem cell research, not adult stem cell research. Um, huge difference. Biggest difference um, being, uh, well, two big differences. Number one, that uh, embryonic stem cell research destroys human embryos. In other words, these little tiny people, um, it destroys them and harvests it's it's you know it's sort of the the microscopic version of live um organ donation there's an old monty python bit where they show up at this person's house and say, well you said that you're gonna donate your your liver we've come to collect but i'm not dead yet well we need it now so you know um and and so they come in with the chainsaw and stuff and it's kind of gruesome but they um you know that's sort of what they're doing here but uh it's with little um unborn babies and uh and the, so they're harvesting so the other difference is that um adult stem cell research has actually yielded results that uh, there are people being treated every day with adult stem cells people that were told they would never walk again are now walking and doing just fine um, you know, just all kinds of healing has been done. Just, you know, what uh, not too long ago would have been considered impossible, miraculous, um, that kind of thing. And so, uh, but it's, it's actually working. It's actually, um, they're doing something. Embryonic stem cell research, to my knowledge, not a single person has been healed by it. And so whenever they talk about it, it's always... Um, the potential, uh, you know, here we have the um, the NIH's response to them lifting the ban again. Um, <clears throat> uh, human embryonic stem cell research holds the potential for generating profound new insights into disease, cell-based therapeutics, and novel methods of screening for new drugs. Potential, because it hasn't actually accomplished anything. It, you know, every every door that opens, two of them close. And, um, whereas with adult stem cell research, it works. So, you know, the other big argument besides the whole moral issue is that you're pumping tons and tons of money into something that they've been working on for years and have accomplished absolutely nothing with it. Whereas people are being helped every day with adult stem cells. So doesn't it make more sense to pump the money into something that actually works and doesn't have all of the moral complications? Well, even if you put the moral stuff aside, just put it into something that works. I mean, otherwise people say, ah, oh, I just really just people are upset about this. Well, there's some ethical issues to deal with, and uh, the whole area of, you know, in vitro fertilization and the, the frozen embryos and stuff, I mean, there's a whole host of, of, of moral issues with all that anyway. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you're right. They, 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 you know, I haven't read of anything, and Christopher Reeve never did walk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of where that is. Uh, I think we better get ready. Why don't you go to viewer mail here, Dale? Okay. Um, and because uh, uh, it's been a while, um, but we got uh, first of all on YouTube, uh, we got a note from Clem Burke one 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 one, and uh, he commented on our episode one seventy four, and uh, he said a judge has been open about his homosexuality for decades. Can you name one thing the Prop 8 lawyers had that proved their point in withholding gay marriage? And we were talking about the um, <clears throat> the California judge that um, declared Proposition 8 unconstitutional. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, I mean, th- th- that was sort of the point that he... Actually, we are two laboratory mice who wish uh, to be on your show as part of an intricate plan to take over the world. Wait. Let me read that. You can waste time with your friends when your chores are done. Well, there's, I mean, here you've got, sorry, you've got a conflict of interest here. Um, you know, where, where someone is particular, specifically biased on one side. Um, and just ignores anything, you know, can I name one thing that they had that proved their point with withholding gay marriage? No, because he dismissed all of it. <laughs> so, you know, there's there's nothing that they did have. Now, you know, did I read all their points? No. 
Okay. But, um, all right, you want one? Fine, I'll give you one. We know, um, through all sorts of psychological studies that children do best with a father and a mother in the home. And that, that each person contributes, um, you know, different things to, to a child's well-being and to their growing up and, and how they learn and, and, and stuff like that. And, um, and, and you're not going to get that. There's no possibility of that in a gay marriage. All right. And people say, well, with the divorce rate, you know, being so high, most kids don't have a father and mother in the home anyway. Well, sadly, that's true. I have a problem with that too. <laughs> you know, I don't think that's good either. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. So, hmm, just struck me. Now I'm frozen on my end. <laughs> don't worry, folks. We're having some trouble. We've, uh, uh, we've had some freezes and things, but the audio seems to be okay. You know, it was okay. Yeah, so no, um, it's just there we go. No, I'm moving again. Okay, okay, okay oh, good. Now you're no, <laughs> okay, good. Uh, the audio is fine, so go ahead and do the other bit of uh, uh, mail there. We got something from um, from George. George, okay, yes. Um, his Pastor Dale special effects were interesting. I will assume that the fire of the Holy Spirit, not the flames from that other hot spot, we Christians want to avoid. Uh, take care and God's richest blessings to you both. <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> I wasn't using the special effects tonight. Um, but uh, yeah, our, our special effect tonight is that sort of matrix effect where everything freezes. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't spin around real fast. No, no, we're, we're still working on that part. <laughs> right. So, okay. Well, anyway, folks, we do pray that God will give you a good week in his love and his grace, and he would watch over you always. Yep. Good night, everybody. God bless.